If the Ferengi thought exiling humanity to a desolate corner of the galaxy for 800,000 years would break our spirit, they were dead fucking wrong. Now, the corrupt shit stains on the Galactic Council will pay for what they did to us. Captain Thomas Jones slammed his fist on the table, his eyes boring into the classified mission files on his display. The historical records detailed humanity's unjust banishment by the Council after false accusations of illegal genetic manipulation. The profit-hungry Ferengi had orchestrated the whole thing, threatened by mankind's meteoric rise and technological prowess. Thomas's blood boiled as he scanned the documents. Generation after generation of humans had suffered and scraped by on a remote, inhospitable world, dreaming of the day they could reclaim their destiny among the stars. And now, with the Council in turmoil and at each other's throats, that time had finally come. EDF leadership was entrusting Thomas and his ship to strike deep into the heart of Council space. Their mission, gather critical intel and hit high-value targets to pave the way for humanity's triumphant return. The risks were immense. One false move could reignite intergalactic war. But the payoff would be the restoration of mankind's rightful place and the Ferengi groveling at their feet. Thomas would make damn sure they succeeded, no matter the cost. The Council had spit on humanity's honor and condemned them to exile for too long. Now they would choke on their regrets as mankind took back the stars that were always theirs to claim. Thomas pored over the personnel files, hand-selecting the best of the best for this critical mission. At the top of his list was Lieutenant Commander Mikhail Volkov, his trusted right-hand man and long-time friend. Mikhail was a crack pilot and a master of covert ops, with a knack for getting in and out of sticky situations undetected. Mikhail, you're with me on this one. Thomas said, clapping his friend on the shoulder. I need your skills and your loyalty. You know I've always got your back, Captain, Mikhail replied with a grin. Let's go kick some Ferengi ass. Next, Thomas approached Dr. Hiroshi Nakamura, the ship's resident expert on all things alien. The xenobiologist had spent years studying the various species of the Galactic Council, learning their languages, cultures, and weaknesses. His knowledge would be invaluable for infiltrating the Ferengi outpost. Dr. Nakamura, I'm assigning you to the away team, Thomas informed him. We'll need your expertise on the ground. Hiroshi nodded solemnly. I understand, Captain. I'll do whatever it takes to ensure the mission's success. As the retribution set course for Council Space, Thomas gathered his crew in the briefing room to go over the plan. Our target is a heavily guarded Ferengi trading post, a hive of black market activity, he explained, pulling up a holographic schematic. We'll slip in, gather any intel we can on this shadow hand faction, and get out before they even know we were there. The crew murmured their approval, eager to strike a blow against their hated enemy. But as they walked towards their destination, a distress signal suddenly blared across the ship's sensors. Captain, we're picking up a distress call from a damaged vessel nearby, Mikhail reported from the helm. Looks like a small Ferengi ship. Thomas frowned. This reeked of a trap, but they couldn't just ignore it. Bring us in carefully. Let's see what we're dealing with. The retribution approached the crippled ship, and Thomas led a small team to investigate. Amidst the wreckage, they discovered a sole surviving Ferengi, battered and bleeding. Please... Help me, the Ferengi croaked. My name is Zorax. I have information about the Shadow Hand, their plans. Grant me asylum, and I'll tell you everything. Thomas exchanged a wary glance with Michael. Trusting a Ferengi was like hugging a viper, but this was too good an opportunity to pass up. All right, Zorax, Thomas said, helping him to his feet. We'll bring you aboard, but if you're jerking us around... I'll personally toss you out the airlock. Back on the retribution, Thomas and Hiroshi interrogated their new guest. Zorak spilled everything he knew about the Shadow Hand between gulps of water and bites of food. They're led by a Ferengi warlord named Krag, Zorax revealed. He's built a secret fleet armed with stolen human tech. He plans to take over the council and put the Ferengi on top. The Ferengi fixed Thomas with a pleading stare. 
Forget your mission, human. Crag is too powerful. If you go after him, it will be the end of you. Thomas slammed his fist on the table, his face hardening with resolve. Like hell it will. This is our chance to cut the head off the snake. Crag and his lackeys can't hide from us now. He turned to Mikhail. Keep us on course for that outpost. It's time we sent the Ferengi a message they won't soon forget. But even as the retribution hurtled towards its target, a seed of doubt began to take root in Thomas's mind. Zorax's story was almost too convenient. Could this all be an elaborate ruse designed to lure them into Crag's waiting jaws? As the trading post loomed on the view screen, he could only hope they weren't flying straight into a trap. The retribution slowed to sublight speed as it approached the seedy Ferengi trading post. In the armory, Thomas and his team made final preparations for the infiltration. Mikhail and Dr. Nakamura were already in full Ferengi disguise, complete with oversized lobes and gaudy clothing. Remember, get in, get the intel we need and get out, Thomas instructed as he helped them adjust their costumes. Keep a low profile and don't take any unnecessary risks. Zorax watched from the corner, an eager glint in his eye. Captain, let me come with them. I know this place like the back of my hand. I can help them blend in, get them access to the right people. Thomas frowned. Every instinct screamed not to trust the Ferengi, but his knowledge was hard to ignore. Fine. But if I catch even a whiff of betrayal, I'll make sure you live to regret it. As the three unlikely allies made their way into the bustling outpost, Thomas and his backup team took position in a nondescript ship nearby, monitoring the situation closely. Mikhail and Dr. Nakamura navigated the crowds, Zorax guiding them through the labyrinth of stalls and shadowy backrooms. There, Zorax whispered, pointing to a Ferengi in ornate robes. That's Crag's top lieutenant. Let me do the talking. The trio approached the Shadowhand agent, Zorax spinning a tale about a lucrative business opportunity. Once they had his attention, Mikhail and Dr. Nakamura steered the conversation towards Crag's plans. I've heard rumors whispers of a big operation, Mikhail probed, keeping his voice low. Something that will put the Ferengi on top once and for all. The agent leaned in, a wicked smile spreading across his face. Oh, it's big all right. Crag's been planning this for years. In a few days, the council won't know what hit them. He's got a weapon, see? Something that will turn their own people against them. Dr. Nakamura's eyes widened. A weapon? What kind of weapon? A mind control device that the agent revealed. Crag will make those council fools dance to his tune, tear each other apart while we watch and profit. Suddenly a shout rang out across the market. Humans, spies in the outpost. The agent's face contorted with rage as he realized he'd been tricked. Seize them! All hell broke loose as Shadowhand operatives swarmed in from all sides. Zorax turned on Mikhail and Dr. Nakamura, screeching for their capture. Thomas and his team burst into action, blasters firing as they fought their way towards their cornered comrades. In the chaos, Mikhail and Dr. Nakamura broke free, racing through the twisting corridors with Zorax hot on their heels. They ducked and weaved, barely evading the Ferengi's grasp, until they hit a dead end. Zorax advanced, a cruel sneer on his lips. Thought you could outsmart me, did you? I'll enjoy watching Crag flay you alive. A blaster shot sizzled past Zorax's head, missing by inches. Thomas stepped out from the shadows, his weapon trained on the treacherous Ferengi. That's far enough, Zorax, Thomas growled. You've got one chance to tell me what I want to know. Where is Crag building this mind control device? Zorax squirmed under Thomas's unwavering glare his face glistening with sweat. All right, all right, I'll talk, he wheezed, his voice cracking. Crag's mind control device is in a secret research facility, deep in Ferengi space. It's almost finished, days away from being operational. Thomas tightened his grip on his blaster. Where exactly is this facility? The Ferengi stammered out a set of coordinates, his eyes darting between Thomas and the barrel of the gun. Thomas memorized the location, and then shoved Zorax towards Mikhail. Cuff him and throw him in the brig. We'll deal with him later. As Mikhail hauled Zorax away, Thomas turned to Dr. Nakamura. Hiroshi, plot a course for those coordinates. We need to move fast. 
If that device is as close to completion as Zorax says, we don't have much time. The retribution tore through space, racing towards the secret Ferengi base. In the briefing room, Thomas gathered his officers to devise an attack plan. We'll split into two teams, he explained, pulling up a holographic schematic of the facility. Team 1, led by me, will secure the mind control device. Team 2, under Mikhail's command, will sabotage the power core and create a diversion. The officers nodded grimly, understanding the gravity of their mission. As the retribution approached the facility, proximity alarms suddenly blared through the ship. Captain, we've got incoming! Mikhail shouted from the bridge. Shadowhand warships, closing fast! The viewscreen lit up with a barrage of laser fire as the enemy ships opened fire. The retribution shuddered under the onslaught, its shields straining to absorb the impacts. Thomas gripped the armrests of his chair, his knuckles white. Evasive maneuvers, return fire! The bridge crew frantically worked their controls, the ship twisting and diving to avoid the worst of the barrage. But the Shadowhand ships were relentless, pounding the retribution with salvo after salvo. Sparks flew from overloaded consoles, and the acrid smell of smoke filled the air. Thomas made a snap decision. Mikhail, start evacuating the crew. Get as many people as you can to the escape pods. Mikhail's eyes widened. What about you, Captain? I'm staying with a skeleton crew. We'll buy you the time you need to get away and complete the mission. Thomas's voice was steady, but his eyes betrayed the weight of his choice. As the majority of the crew fled to the escape pods, Thomas and his hand-picked volunteers steeled themselves for a final stand. The retribution, battered but unbowed, plunged into the facility's defences, drawing fire away from the infiltration teams. Mikhail's team slipped into the base, planting explosives at key structural points. They moved silently, avoiding patrols and security systems, their progress marked by the occasional muffled blast. Meanwhile, Thomas and his team fought their way deeper into the facility, cutting down Shadowhand soldiers with grim efficiency. They breached the chamber housing the mind control device, a pulsing, sinister machine that seemed to throb with malevolent energy. But as they approached the device, a figure emerged from the shadows. It was Crag himself, armed with a crackling energy whip. Foolish humans, he sneered. You think you can stop me? I am the future. The Ferengi warlord lashed out, the whip coiling around a soldier's throat and burning through flesh. The man fell, his scream cut short. Thomas and his remaining team returned fire, but Crag's personal shield absorbed the blasts. Thomas charged forward ducking under a whip strike and tackling Crag to the ground. They grappled furiously, trading blows and tearing at each other's armour. But Crag was strong, and Thomas was already wounded. The Ferengi slowly gained the upper hand, his whip snaking around Thomas's neck. Through the haze of pain, Thomas saw his chance. He ripped a grenade from his belt and jammed it into Crag's shield generator. The explosion threw them apart, Crag's shield flickering and dying. Thomas staggered to his feet, his uniform torn and bloody. He raised his blaster and fired again and again until Crag lay still. But the effort had cost him. He collapsed beside the mind control device, his life ebbing away. With trembling hands, he keyed in the self-destruct sequence, the device's countdown casting an eerie red glow over the carnage. Thomas smiled faintly, knowing he had succeeded, even as darkness closed in. Mikhail, having received Thomas's final transmission, detonated his explosives. The facility shook itself apart, the mind control device consumed in a roiling fireball. Amidst the destruction, the retribution limped away, its crew numb with grief and loss. They had struck a blow against the Shadow Hand, but the cost had been high. As the ship made its way back to Earth, Mikhail found himself grappling with the weight of Thomas's sacrifice and the challenges that lay ahead. The war was far from over, and the Shadow Hand would undoubtedly strike back harder than ever. But even as they mourned, the crew of the Retribution found strength in Thomas's example. He had shown them the way, proven that humanity would never bow to tyranny, no matter the odds. 
and as a new generation of officers stepped forward to take up the fight, they did so with the knowledge that they carried the hopes and dreams of all mankind on their shoulders. Ashes drifted through the recycled air of the Retribution's bridge as Mikhail stood before the viewscreen, his uniform still stained with Thomas's blood. The weight of command settled heavily on his shoulders, but there was no time to grieve. Krag had slipped through their fingers, and with him the prototype of the mind control device. Lieutenant, any word from EDF intelligence? Mikhail asked, his voice rough with exhaustion and sorrow. Yes, sir, the young officer replied, her fingers flying across the console. They've tracked Krag's ship to an uncharted planet in the Ferengi outer rim. It's a real hellhole. Gravity anomalies, hostile wildlife, the works. Mikhail nodded grimly. Then that's where we're going. Set a course and engage at maximum warp. The retribution leaped into the void, its engine straining as it hurtled towards the distant world. Mikhail retired to his quarters, poring over the scant intelligence reports. Krag was wounded, desperate, but still dangerous. He would stop at nothing to complete the device and bend the galaxy to his will. As the ship approached the planet, warning klaxons blared through the corridors. The deck bucked beneath Mikhail's feet, throwing him against the bulkhead. He staggered to the bridge, gripping the back of the helmsman's chair for support. Report, he barked, struggling to make himself heard over the cacophony of alarms. We're caught in some kind of gravitational anomaly, the helmsman shouted, his knuckles white on the controls. Engines are overloading. We're going down. The viewscreen filled with the mottled green and brown of the planet's surface as the retribution plummeted through the atmosphere. Trees snapped like matchsticks beneath the ship's hull, and then everything went black. Mikhail awoke to the taste of blood in his mouth and the acrid stench of smoke. He hauled himself out of the twisted wreckage of the bridge, his head pounding. Around him, the survivors of the crash stumbled from the ship, dazed and bleeding. Grab what gear you can salvage and form up, Mikhail ordered, wincing as he shouldered a battered pulse rifle. We're not leaving this rock until we find Crag and end this. For days they slogged through the dense jungles and jagged ravines of the alien world. Strange beasts stalked them from the shadows, their eyes glinting with predatory hunger. The nights were filled with the shrieks and howls of creatures that had never known the tread of civilization. But Mikhail pushed on, driven by the memory of Thomas's sacrifice. He would not let his friend's death be in vain. And then, as they crested a ridgeline, they saw it, the yawning mouth of a bunker complex, half hidden beneath the twisting roots of gargantuan trees, Mikhail motioned for his team to take up positions around the entrance. He caught Dr. Nakamura's eye, saw the determination etched into the scientist's face. They had come too far to turn back now. With a silent countdown, they breached the bunker, flashlights cutting through the gloom. The tunnels rang with the crack of gunfire and the sizzle of energy weapons as they clashed with Krag's elite guards. Mikhail lost himself in the rhythm of battle, his rifle bucking against his shoulder, the stench of ozone thick in his nostrils. And then a cry from behind him. He whirled to see Dr. Nakamura struggling in the grip of a hulking Ferengi, a neural disruptor pressed to his temple. The scientist's eyes met Mikhail's, wide with fear and desperation. Surrender or your friend dies, the Ferengi snarled, his finger tightening on the trigger. Mikhail hesitated, his heart pounding. He couldn't let Krag have Dr. Nakamura, couldn't let him be used to finish the mind control device, but he also couldn't abandon his friend, his comrade. In that moment, he made a choice, a choice that would haunt him for the rest of his days. He leveled his rifle and fired, the shot piercing Dr. Nakamura's chest. The scientist crumpled, his eyes glazing over, a look of shock and betrayal etched into his features. Mikhail charged forward a roar of anguish tearing from his throat. He fought like a man possessed, his blows fueled by rage and grief. And then he was face to face with Crag, the Ferengi's eyes glinting with malice. You're too late, human, Crag sneered, his hand clutching a pulsing alien device. The device is complete and your friend's mind belongs to me. Dr. Nakamura rose from the floor, his movements jerky and unnatural. 
He lunged at Mikhail, his hands closing around the human's throat. Mikhail struggled, gasping for air, his vision blackening at the edges. With a burst of desperate strength, he broke free and lashed out, his fist connecting with Dr. Nakamura's jaw. The scientist staggered back, his eyes blank and lifeless. Mikhail looked into those eyes, saw no trace of the friend he had known, and made the hardest decision of his life. He raised his rifle and fired again and again, until Dr. Nakamura lay still on the blood-slick floor. Tears streamed down Mikhail's face as he turned to Krag, the Ferengi's laughter echoing off the bunker walls. The battle that followed was brutal, a primal clash of strength and will. Krag fought with the fury of a cornered beast, but Mikhail fought with the cold, implacable determination of a man with nothing left to lose. In the end it was Mikhail who stood victorious, his hands slick with Krag's blood. The Ferengi lay broken at his feet, the mind-control device shattered beyond repair. But even as the light faded from Krag's eyes, he fixed Mikhail with a mocking grin. You think this is over, human? Krag rasped, his breath coming in wet, rattling gasps. The Shadow Hand was just a puppet, a distraction. The true enemy is still out there, pulling the strings, and they won't stop until your precious Federation is nothing but ashes. Mikhail stumbled from the bunker, his heart heavy with the weight of all he had lost. The surviving members of his crew gathered around him, their faces etched with the same grief and horror that he felt. They made their way back to the retribution, the journey a blur of pain and exhaustion. As the ship limped back to Earth, Mikhail sat in the captain's chair, staring out at the stars. He thought of Thomas, of Dr. Nakamura, of all the lives that had been lost in this bitter war, and he made a silent vow, a promise to the fallen and the living alike. He would find the truth behind Cragg's final words, would uncover the identity of the shadowy puppet master that had orchestrated this conflict, and he would make them pay, no matter the cost, to himself. For he was a soldier of Earth, a guardian of humanity, and he would not rest until his people were truly free, until they could claim their rightful place among the stars. No matter the sacrifice. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.